The Nightcore P35i is the world's first combined LED and LEP flashlight. With a maximum beam range of one mile or 1.6 kilometers, this unique dual function flashlight can fulfill a wide range of uses from a pin sharp, single long range beam to a traditional short range floodlight. Is this the ultimate EDC? Maybe. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeYouSelf.com reviews. Keep doing that. First up, what is an LEP flashlight? You're probably familiar with LEDs or light emitting diodes, which are highly efficient and bright light sources used in almost all electronics nowadays. But have you heard of LEP? It stands for laser excited phosphor. And it's a bit like a mix of a laser pointer and an LED. Phosphor is typically used as a filter in combination with blue LEDs to get a white light source in traditional flashlights. The LED will emit blue light, which the phosphor absorbs and then changes into white, blah, blah, blah. With an LEP, a blue laser is used instead, pointed at a phosphor crystal, which then re-emits a superbly bright white light. But why bother? How is an LEP better than LEDs? The main reason to use an LEP is that the beam can be more easily focused. This results in an extremely narrow beam with almost no light spillage, a bit like a real life lightsaber. The P35i LEP module manages a maximum of 410 lumens. And while that might not sound like much, the highly focused beam means that the light can travel for further, for up to a mile, in fact. A little light can indeed go a very long way, depending on what you do with it. The strength of LEPs, though, is also perhaps their greatest weakness, because the beam can be just too precise for real-world usage. But that's where the P35i from Nightcore comes in. It combines both the traditional high-brightness LEDs with an LEP module, giving you the choice of a highly focused beam, a basic floodlight, or even a mix of both. And a quick warning, this is a class one laser product. You can burn things with this. Turbo mode will get very hot very quickly, but only at this end. The bit you hold never gets uncomfortable. Still, it will easily blind someone. Let's talk about the design. The P35i design is certainly unique with a sort of space agey feel to it, especially if you're looking at it head on. The emitter side of things features a roughly one inch off-center lens for the LEP module, surrounded by six Cree XPG3 LEDs. Uniquely, these are all positioned in a sort of crescent moon shape. In use though, it doesn't seem to affect the output shape at all. You still get a nice broad, floody output. Just under the lens shroud is a small OLED screen and mode button. And this is an immensely useful feature that provides immediate feedback uh, on what mode and intensity is currently selected, as well as the current battery level, even without turning the light on. More on the operational modes later though. The hand grip can be found on the far end of the P35i with a knurled surface uh, for extra grip. To me, the handheld area is ever so slightly too thin at about one inch diameter and a little bit too short. I would have preferred something a bit more substantial to grab onto, maybe a bit at the back as well so you can sort of tuck in there. It ends up feeling slightly front heavy, but if you move your hand up a little with your thumb around here, it's a lot more comfortable. On the end of the P35i is the main on-off switch, uh, which can also function as a momentary tactical switch for whatever mode was last used by just uh, holding it in slightly. The button protrudes a fair bit though, and I can see this being accidentally pressed if you keep it outside of the included holster. You'll also find the USB-C port, charging port here, underneath this slightly annoying rubber cover, which never quite seems to go back in properly. And it also opens far too easily. It's definitely a bit of an afterthought on this end, just to get an IP rating, I think. Also included in the box is a tactical remote switch, and rather than having to completely uh, unscrew this and replace the tail end. Instead, it plugs into the USB-C port and latches onto the side here. However, if you do want to use a rifle mount with this or 
um, where it would probably look a little bit silly on a pistol, but you'd need to purchase a Picatinny mount separately. Also included in the box is a 21700 i series battery. This one here, a CR123 battery adapter, a holster, and a spare o-ring. The holster is really sturdy and it really does help with safety. I'd encourage you to keep it in this, not just in your pocket. There's no physical lockout switch or otherwise on the P35i, so accidentally turning on the high spot LEP mode in your pocket will result in a hole in your jeans and possibly your leg too. So it's best to keep it in there uh, where you have a very solid end and you're not going to accidentally hit the button at the end. So on to operation. The Nightcore P35i, as I mentioned, is a dual function flashlight and that means you have three fundamental route modes to choose from which you can change when the light is off by holding down the mode button and then pressing in the tail end switch slightly. It'll then automatically cycle through each mode. These modes are spot, flood and mix. Spot is exclusively the LEP module, while flood uses the LEDs and mix of course uses both. Switching modes however will activate the uh, actual light, so it's not something you can do discreetly. So once the P35 is actually on and in a particular mode, you can then cycle through the five intensities on flood or spot modes by tapping this mode button uh, once while it's on, and that will cycle through. And it'll tell you on the screen exactly which mode you're in, so it's really easy to use and understand. If you're in mix mode, you get three intensities to choose from instead. And it's worth noting that from either spot or flood mode, you can hold down the mode button and you'll go straight to uh, turbo mix mode, like that. And at this point, it's also worth mentioning that tiny LED screen again. I told you that when off, uh, you can press the button to briefly indicate what the current mode is, but even when the flashlight is on, but when the flashlight is on, it's even more useful. Uh, with information about the expected runtime remaining, beam range, and brightness. In turbo mode, uh, instead, it switches to a countdown timer represented by this bar. I, of course, assumed that an OLED screen on a flashlight would be a bit of a gimmick. I mean, come on, whatever. You don't need a screen, it's a flashlight. But now that I've got to use one with it on, it seems immensely useful. The indication of time alone is a huge benefit. So in terms of light output, you get a very cold, pure white light from both the LEDs and the LEP on the P35i, and I think the beam shots speak for themselves there. As a floodlight, it's not nearly as impressive as other pure floodlights in this category, of course, but 3000 lumens isn't anything to be sniffed at either. It's plenty enough for most people, and the runtime on high is very good. It's the LEP spot mode that you're really buying this for, though, and I don't think you'll be disappointed there. The first time I turned this on at night, I was truly blown away by how pin sharp the beam was and how far it could illuminate so perfectly. Floodlights are great, but at distance, the actual amount of light you get per square inch or meter is still very small. And in truth, your, only, your eyes can only see one very small area at once. With this, overall, you get less light, but the light you do have is a lot more concentrated and hence brighter on a single spot. On a technical level, there is a little bit of light leakage um, in the spot mode, a sort of halo around the edge if you aim it close up. But in real world usage, you're not gonna notice it that much when it's on a far off object. One thing I will also say is that the spot mode, if you accidentally aim it in sort of high or turbo modes at an object that's close to you, it can actually be really blinding. If you hit a bit of metal, say 10 meters away, oof, you're gonna notice it. Mix mode usage is even more interesting in that it combines the best of both worlds. An overall flood to illuminate the whole area, but combined with that pin sharp spot focus. And while the spot mode is the most impressive to show off on video, I think it's actually the mix mode that will get the most amount of real world usage hours racked up by owners of this light. In terms of runtime, again, I mentioned that useful little screen, but the quoted totals uh, for a fresh full battery. So flood only runtime, turbo is 3000 lumens for 45 minutes, high is 1000 lumens for two hours, medium is 300 lumens for six hours 45 minutes, while 
low is 70 lumens for 28 hours or ultra low uh, 60 hours. Spot or just the LEP module is two hours and 15 minutes in turbo mode. That's the full 410 lumens. In high mode four, that's 200 lumens for three hours, medium 130 lumens for four hours, 30 minutes, while low is eight hours, ultra low 12 hours. And then finally, when you're using both the flood LEDs and the LEP uh, spot mode in a mixed output, so high at 3000 lumens total for 45 minutes, all the way down to low 130 lumens for six hours. Obviously mix and flood mode are going to drain the battery um, fastest, but those are still really impressive figures for 45 minutes in the highest brightness. Lastly, let's talk about batteries and charging. So you've got two options included in the box with the P35i. The first is that 21700 sized 5000 milliamp hour battery. That's a Nightcore NL2150 HP i series. And this can be charged via the uh, USB-C that's built into the tail cap. And that's the best way to power the P35i with the full selection modes open to you. Now, just to be clear, this is not compatible with generic rechargeable 21700 batteries, despite obviously being uh, the same shape. The second option is to use that CR123 battery holder, which takes two regular CR123 batteries. Though you should be aware that that will limit your output mode somewhat and exclude you from the turbo and high intensity when in mix mode. It just doesn't have uh, the same output current capabilities. So is the Nightcore P35i your next EDC? The design of the Nightcore P35i is a little bit peculiar and futuristic, and it has a few minor annoyances that stop me from awarding it full marks. The handle feels a little bit too small for my hands, but mostly the USB-C port is really kind of bad and that cover, it seems like a minor thing, but it does get annoying. The button, in my opinion, is too large and I'm not convinced on the whole uh, plug-in USB-C tactical switch. I think an optional full tail end replacement switch would have been better. In terms of actual light output, it's not perfect either. There's that small halo on the LEP spot mode. That's really just nitpicking because in practical, actual use, I love this thing. Like I said, the mix mode is likely to get the most usage for me, but it's certainly fun to use the spot mode uh, on a cold, misty night solely for pretending you're a Jedi. It's really an ingenious design to mix both kinds of light, light output at once, giving you the best of both worlds, meaning you get both the contextual information from a little bit of floodlight and that pin sharp long range spot for actually searching out a target. Also, did I mention there's a five year warranty? That's pretty awesome. So I hope I've told you what you needed to know about the Nightcore P35i. If not, let me know in the comments, otherwise, Please hit like and consider subscribing for more reviews of all the coolest gadgets, flashlights and other tech with me, James Bruce and the rest of my team here at makeyourself.com. Until next time.